How Deep the Father's Love for Us by Jenny Larson In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John 4.10 As I was thinking on the death and resurrection of our Lord this week, the thought of just how deep and incredible that love of God is to us, I was at a loss of words to describe it. I pray for all of us a revelation of the love of God as we truly celebrate His resurrection this weekend. I love the words to this song. <clears throat> how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away, as wounds which mar the chosen ones bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice, call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there, until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain, gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. How Deep the Father's Love for Us, lyrics by Stuart Townend. Another scripture to steer our hearts with just how wonderful that love is. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, Though perhaps for a good person one would even dare to die, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 5 through 8. His love was spoken and his love was demonstrated. His love will be fulfilled in everyone who is his child. God is love. He can only then act out of who he is. All he does is out of love. Not because it is a quality he possesses, but because it is who he is. He is love. So all he does can only demonstrate that love. Love hates all that would harm those he loves. If we would get a sense of sin and the holiness of God in contrast and see it in his eyes, then we couldn't say we love him honestly unless we hate sin also. The sin that caused him to give up his throne and all he had in heaven to come here in the form of man, taking on the weakness of flesh, suffering the insults and rejection of those he created for his love and then taking the sin he so despises unto himself, becoming sin for us, becoming a curse for us. Then he was innocent, when he was innocent himself and suffering the judgment of that sin, so that he could free us from it, when there was no other way we could be free of it. Do we really know what he has saved us from? Do we really grasp it? I don't think we do. There's a flippant attitude towards sin many times among Christians. Many say they have received Christ, but have no comprehension that in order to receive him into their hearts, they must be saved from sin. He cannot dwell with sin. His love is not to dwell with our sin and come to fulfill our petty, selfish lives here on earth and make us happy and give us everything we want, as some seem to think. It is to cleanse us and deliver us from something so awful and so ugly and so repulsive to him that he did the most drastic thing to destroy its power and presence in us once and for all. He is not a way to God. He is the way, truth, and life. When in the garden, Jesus prayed, and going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26:39. And again he prayed, Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Matthew 26:42. If there were any other way other than the death of his only begotten son, Jesus would have been spared the cross. That cross was the only way for us to be saved. Yet the world does not know what it needs to be saved from. How great the Father's love for us. If we understand his holiness and hatred for sin and evil, we would be so in awe of that love for us. It means nothing to us if we don't understand what sin is and how dead we are till he reveals it to us by the conviction of the Holy Spirit through his living word. We, we will only see it there in his word 
as we read it and let it penetrate and convict us of sin. Our nature is to hide in the darkness of the world and its feel-good philosophies and to run from any world, word that convicts or makes us aware of our guilt. We try to excuse our sin and even philosophize it away, making it seem even beautiful and meaningful, or we call it a disease or sickness that we have no control over and are not responsible for. The truth is we have no control over it. It is the bondage, bondage to us that we cannot free ourselves from, but it is our nature and we can't escape it. That's the very reason we need a Savior. Only Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection can free us. Only he can radically put to death that sinful nature and make us a whole new creation and give us a new nature by putting his spirit in us to dwell in our spirit, making us brand new inside and turning our hearts to see and know him and experience his love and glory. He will bring that to a full redemption one day as this corrupt body is destroyed and we put on incorruption. The last enemy will be destroyed that sin caused. Sin is the cause of death. Death will be swallowed up in victory and never touch us again. Those who know him and have been convicted of sin and turn to him for salvation receive even now the power of his resurrection in their lives to enable them to live their new life as risen out of the power of death and control of sin and unto him being filled with his righteousness along with the promise of complete redemption at his coming for us to catch us up to meet him in the clouds and to be with him where he is for all eternity. 1 Corinthians 15, 26, 42 through 47 through 57 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. His love is deep enough that he'd rather us face the truth of ourselves no matter how painful that is in order to save us from ourselves. His love is deep enough that he'd rather us suffer loss now in this temporal life if necessary in order for us to experience the true life in his presence for eternity that he desires us to have. His love is deep enough that he will not spare his children in chastising us in order for us to truly see how awful our sin is and what its consequences are. If we see that now and are saved from it, we are filled with his righteousness and true life. His love is deep enough to be long-suffering and patient with us in this life as often as we fall and neglect the life he wants to work in us. His love is deep enough to allow us to fall and be very hurt from it sometimes in order for us to be made to see that we have no righteousness of our own or power apart from him. May this be our prayer as Paul prayed that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. How many dimensions to his love Yet in our day we are more taught to seek our own self-love rather than to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. The fullness of God. I can't even imagine that. Yet one day we will truly know all the fullness of God and be filled with him. Wow. Not the fullness of ourselves. That's what he is delivering us from. That's why Christ died. That's why he was risen from the dead. This is what we too are being to be delivered from in him as we take on his death and resurrection by faith we are to be lifted up from the death of our self-life and risen up to newness of life in him we are not given a false happiness and self-fulfillment we are given true life in Christ and that life is eternal and can never be taken from us once we put our trust in that full salvation according to his word are you a believer in the true biblical Christ have you seen your sin and been convicted of its death according to his word? Have you given yourself to and received his salvation by grace through faith in the death and resurrection? Have you put off the old and put on the true and living Christ of the word? If you have, do you realize what he has saved you from and what he has saved you unto? Again, I pray, I like to pray what Paul prayed for myself and for each of us that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, 
and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Ephesians 1, 17-21 Father, may it be so in each of us as we think on that greatest of all sacrifices this weekend and truly grasp what you have done for us and how very deep your love to us is.